missing world It couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together
Well, again, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Good morning to you. What a beautiful day. The, uh, David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We're talking about uh, Jesus, your shepherd, in part two. I want to encourage you, if you didn't hear last week's message or the other day, just go back and listen to it so you get the full impact of what we're talking about. Uh, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Very quickly, those 18 points are uh, things I want to talk to you about in this 23rd Psalm. We went into eight of those this past Wednesday evening. So I'm going to go ahead and start with number nine because so I'll have time to get into the message for this Sunday morning. So uh, number nine, it says, uh, well, let's back up just very quickly. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. We talked about that. He leads me beside the still waters. We talked about that. He restores my soul. He leads me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's where I ended that this past Wednesday evening. Let's continue from there. And uh, I will fear no evil. So again, Jesus is called the good shepherd, the great shepherd, and the chief shepherd. And he is to watch over the flock because he is the anointed one, the shepherd of our life. Now, uh, so I will not fear that talks about protection. As my shepherd, I don't have to be afraid because he's here to protect me as a shepherd. You know, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 out of the Amplified Bible, it says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice, of craving and, and cringing and, and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a calm and a well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. That's what the Good Shepherd has done for us. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 6. And none shall make you afraid. See, these words encourage us. Numbers 14, 9. The Lord is with us. Fear them not. All through the scriptures, through the 23rd Psalm, it talks about, with, with each verse in other parts of the Bible, it talks about that particular subject. I will not fear because there in Deuteronomy, the third chapter, verse 22, you shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. Or I like this. I say it this way. You shall not fear them, for the Lord your shepherd, he will fight for you. A shepherd will defend his flock. A shepherd will fight for his flock, because he loves his flock. He knows them by name. That sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? He knows you by name. In 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16. Fear not, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So you don't have to be afraid, for they that's with us are more than that's with, that's with them. First Chronicles 28, 20. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. Uh, Psalms 27, 3. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Proverbs 3, 25. I want to encourage you to go through the Bible, go through the words, and read, on, read scriptures that deal with fear. That will encourage you that God always reminded us, don't be afraid. It says, I shall not fear. Be not afraid, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, uh, uh, 3, 25 and 26. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes. 
For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Oh, I believe that. And Isaiah 41.10, you know this. I, I quoted this other night. Fear thou not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, I'm your God. And, and so don't be discouraged in this time because he's your shepherd. And as your shepherd, he said, the psalm says, I will not fear. Daniel 10.19, fear not. Peace be unto thee. Be strong. Yea, be strong. Joel 2.21, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Notice what it says in Mark 6.50, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Now, that just come. That, have, that was mentioned by the Lord Jesus, your good shepherd. He said, be of good cheer. It is I. That's what he is saying to us. Jesus is our shepherd. And John 14, 27, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So don't be afraid. And Habakkuk, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews uh, 13, 6, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what men shall do unto me. What man shall do unto me. I, I could say, I will boldly say, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, and my shepherd, as my shepherd, he'll watch over me. Even when I falter, he's there to pick me up. Even when I, when I miss it, he's there to forgive me and lead me to the right path, as we talked about, because he's a shepherd. So he says, I will not fear. Why? The next one says, for thou art with me. That's faithfulness. Not only he's my protector, but I have faithfulness. He, thou art with me. That means he's faithful. He's faithful to you. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Psalms 89 verse 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Aren't you glad that God has been faithful to you through the years? Aren't you glad that even when you missed it, God has always been faithful to forgive you, to cast your sins into the sea of forgiveness? Aren't you glad that God is always faithful to you because of his mercies? Because it says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known his faithfulness to all generations. In Lamentation, the third chapter, verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercy that mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fell not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank God for the mercies. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. He's called faithful. Notice what it says, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Glory be to God. You can insert shepherd because God, Jesus, is your shepherd. Know therefore that the shepherd, your God, he is your shepherd, the faithful shepherd to you which keep com uh, those commandments and those covenants and mercy unto him. And notice what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. Faithful is he that called you who also will do it. And number 11, thy rod, it goes on and says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's discipline. He will discipline you. As I said, the, the sheep in the fold, he has this staff in the natural and that and the top end is, is a hook. And when a sheep is going astray, he'll get that hook of that staff and kind of get it around its little neck and just kind of jerk it back. Don't go that way. Don't go that way. The Lord done you a few times that way. No, don't go that way. And uh, if you get kind of uh, uh, rebellious or getting kind of rowdy, whatever, he'll get that other end to kind of poke you a little bit and say, hey, you better straighten up. That's what a shepherd does. So uh, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Discipline. You know, we need that godly discipline in our lives. That's what happens to all these young people that don't have no discipline. 
uh, one man uh, asked a missionary one time when he came to the United States of America, they asked him, what stood out to you the most when you came to America? What was the most thing that stood out to you? He said, well, what stood out to me is how parents obey their children. You know, that they got it vice versa. We need to go the other way. Let, let kids know that you, are, you love them, but you are their shepherd at home. But Jesus is their good shepherd and great shepherd. So we need that discipline. The, the rod represents the authority of the shepherd. It, it was like a club that the shepherd used to protect the sheep. Now note this. To have authority, one must submit to authority. The shepherd himself should be under authority. So the shepherd, we are the under shepherd, is under authority. And Jesus was the good, even though he's the good shepherd, the great shepherd, and the chief shepherd, he was under the authority of his father. He said, the works I do, my father and me. In other words, he don't do anything unless he goes to the father. A complete authority. Amen. Perfect unity, perfect submission, perfect Lord, perfect shepherd, perfect God, perfect Holy Spirit. Thank God. All one, three in one. The staff was a long stick with a hook on the end used as an aid to pull the sheep out of the pit if it fell in. So if a sheep falls, the hook is to pull them up. Don't get in a pit with them, but pull them up. God will fight and protect you. And the next point I want to talk about is number 12. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's hope. A shepherd will give the flock hope. How does he give the flock hope? He gives them hope by giving them the word. He feeds them the word. And the word gives them hope. The word gives them vision. He gives them a hope. He gives them love. He gives them discipline. He helps them in life. That's the purpose of the shepherd Jesus. Jesus gives us hope. He gives us discipline. He gives us a direction. And we follow his wisdom because he is the great shepherd. So that's hope. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Psalm 16 verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Rest in hope. Lamentation, the third chapter, verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. See, that's why. Remember when David says, I hid in my heart? I hid thy word in my heart that I not might sin against thee. See, the word gives you hope. Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Because the Word of God gives you hope. He's the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He gives you hope by the Word. Have you ever went to the church, went, went to church you know, and, and it seems like you're just so hopeless and things. You had a bad week, but you come to church. It so happened God had a message for you. The under-shepherd opened his mouth and said things he didn't know he's going to say. But yet, that was your hope. You clung to it said, that was for me. You need that hope. That's why you need to be there to hear what God has to say through the under shepherd. And it says, this I call to my mind, therefore have I hope. So you take those scriptures with you and learn them and recall to mind. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his passion fails not. They are, in, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It gives us hope. Romans 4, 18, who against hope believed in hope. So God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. It gives us hope. Abraham understood that. The Bible says there in Romans 14, Abraham was against hope. He believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. See, in the natural, you may not have no hope. But thank God, God, through his love and his mercy and his kindness and his faithfulness, has hope. That's why the Bible says, I hope in thy word. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is hope in manifestation. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Your shepherd will lead you and feed you and guide you and give you hope because Jesus is the shepherd. We're talking about Jesus, your shepherd. All these things is about Jesus. Even though there's many other shepherds on this planet, but the only reason why they're in shepherd, the real under shepherd is because God anointed them, him with himself, who's all these things. He is the shepherd. And Romans 15, 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The reason why I have hope, not negative, I hope I make it. No, I got godly hope. I know I have that hope in his word that it created faith in me. Amen. And it goes on and says, Thou anointest my head with oil, the good shepherd. Amen. That's consecration. Consecration, that means dedicated to a sacred purpose. Dedicated to a sacred purpose. He anointed. A, uh, the anointing is to bring sense of worth. The anointing gives sense of worth. The shepherds in the field anointed the head of the sheep with oil and spies to protect it from the harmful insects. That's why the shepherd would anoint the sheep in the natural with this spies and oil to protect even in, in the ears from, from uh, insects from getting into the ears and on, on, to bring harm to them. And that's why God anointed us to protect us from the wicked one. Protect us. When we are anointed by the Holy Ghost, that anointing. For the Spirit of the Lord God is appointed me. He has anointed me to do the works of God. He has anointed you to do the works to protect you because he's a good shepherd. Second Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea. And in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. God has anointed you. The good shepherd of the flock has anointed us to do what we're called to do. All of you, one way or something, you're, you are anointed to do something. Thank God for the anointing. Amen. First John 2 and verse 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. It's like this, if the anointing, sometimes the anointing will get on me just to teach. And sometimes the anointing will get on a person just to preach or to exhort, whatever that anointing is. No man can teach you things. No man can teach you. It is, it is the anointing that teaches you. Without the anointing, you will not be able to understand what God is saying through the reading of the Scriptures. Even though the man who is ministering, the shepherd who is ministering the Word of God, you have to have that anointing to be able to understand it. And thank God, God will give you that anointing upon you to open your eyes of your understanding. And for, I quoted this, but let me read it. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering to the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And, and, and so therefore, the next one, my cup runneth over. Now, that, that talks about abundance. My cup runneth over. Remember what the good shepherd said? He said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. It's the anointing. God can give the, put an anointing on you. The good shepherd put an anointing on you to prosper. It is he that teaches us to profit. You profit in all areas of life. Your health, your family, in every area of life. Prosperity is not just money, honey. 
prosperity is the ability to walk in the anointing of God to meet the needs of the people. That's one area of prosperity, to be a blessing. So my cup ran over. That's abundance. Feel being filled with the Spirit. You know, John 7, 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. In other words, his cup going to run over. So, you can be filled with the Spirit, and you can be overflowing with the Spirit. When you receive Jesus as Lord, it's like a glass of water. I mean, you are full of the Spirit of God. You are just as much a child of God as anybody else if you are born again. But to be filled with the Spirit overflowing out of your belly shall flow livers of water as, as it was the day of Pentecost. The overflowing of the water out of the glass, overflowing, that's the overflowing experience. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Speaking other tongues. Yes, it's a blessing. That's another message within itself. And number, the next one, number 15. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's blessings. We talk about abundance, and this is blessings. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places and Christ. Everything you see on this planet came from the inside of God. God spoke these things. Spiritual spoke these things into manifestation. And we get the word of God and we frame it with the word of God. Through faith we understand the world were framed by the word of God. And we get a hold of this revelation because of this abundance, this blessing, this anointing that bit upon on us. We learn that. We get a hold of the word of God. We speak it for life and death is in the power of the tongue. Or life and death are in the creation of the tongue of what you say. Amen. You can have what you say. So surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's blessings. Deuteronomy 28 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall you be in your basket and your storehouses. Blessed shall you be when you come in and when you go out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise against to be thee to be smitten before thy face. Thou shalt come. They shall come against you one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that you set your hands unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Even though this old covenant reading, but I tell you what, it applies to us today. God, that's why we always say you, you're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. You're the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. And no weapon is formed against you shall prosper. Whom he leads, he feeds. Whom he guides, he provides. These things is because God is with you. He is your good shepherd. And I thank God that he is the good shepherd. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me. And the last one but not least is number 16. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's eternity. Now that's eternity. As we read the 23rd Psalm at the very end, we have now entered into eternity. Galatians 6.10. As we have therefore opportunity... Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. We're in the household of faith. Isaiah 57, verse 15, the Living Bible. The high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. The Holy One says this. I live in that high and holy place with those with contrite, humble spirit. Dwell, and I refresh the humble and give new courage to those with repentant hearts. Psalms 89, 36. His seed shall endure forever. And as you know, 
We can read the whole psalm, but won't do it, but Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the error that flieth by day. And I want you in close. I want you to read the rest of the, of, of the chapter. And so with these, uh, these past two services, we talked about the 23rd Psalm of how he is to us. Praise God. He is my shepherd. That's relationship. He is, I shall not want, that is supply. He leads, makes me, makes me lie down in green pastures, and that's rest. He leads me beside the still waters, that's refreshment. He restores my soul, that's healing. He leads me in the path of righteousness, that is guidance. Yes, for his name's sake, and that's purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's testing. We talked about that. He doesn't test you, but he'll lead you. When you get there, he'll lead you through it. And then tonight, or this morning, we talked about, I will not fear. I will feel no evil. That's protection. Amen. He will protect us. And, and we talked about, for thou art with me. That's faithfulness. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. That's discipline. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That gives me hope. Thou known as my head with all, that, uh, that's consecration. And also my cup runneth over, that's abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and that's blessings. And last of all, but not least, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and that's eternity. So I hope these uh, two messages has helped you to understand that Jesus is your shepherd, and that you are not alone. As a great shepherd, he is great. As a good shepherd, he is good. As the chief, chief shepherd, he is Lord of all. So don't let him just be your savior, but let him be your shepherd. Let him be your Lord. Remember what Jesus said, our shepherd? He said, why call me Lord and not do the things I say? See, to many people, he's only the shepherd. But Jesus wants to be, I mean, to many people, he's only the Savior. But Jesus wants to be our shepherd. And as our shepherd, we'll follow his instructions. Him being our shepherd will also give our life for the sheep. You know, sometimes it's not easy doing the thing that you know is right. But it's always rewarding. Always walk up rightly before God and man. I want to remind you that we love you here at Living Word Church. And if you don't have a home church, we welcome you to come see us. Continue with us online. We're, like, we're located in McDonough, Georgia. And, and, and 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia. God has tremendously blessed us here. We have a, a Living Word Christian Academy school. We love that school. We have Noah's Art Daycare Learning Center. Learning Center and thank God for top-of-the-line daycare. And we have an outstanding uh, body of believers at Living Word Church. And, and I say they're the best. They're the best. I got the best. And a shepherd should feel that way about his flock. And I want you, flock, everyone that's, that's not here at this moment, I want you to know that. Me and Charlotte, we love you very much. We always pray for you. If you ever need us, you call us. You're here. We will keep the light on for you. Love you. God bless you. Until next time I see you. Praise God. Thank you for watching Living Word Church online and being part of our eFam. If you joined us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And if you joined us on Facebook, please like the page so you don't miss any future events or services. There are a couple ways you can support this awesome ministry. One, by sharing this video with friends and family and getting the word out. Two, by making a financial donation by clicking the Give Now button. This will help us to continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. Thank you again for watching. God bless.